Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of Anwar. I have been busy installing the Intergas Extreme Central Heating Boiler. I am now busy disassembling the return and supply pipes. Here you can see that I first stripped off the paint layer from the old pipe before sawing it through, because this is easier than after sawing. I always take my wet vacuum cleaner with me for this kind of work. It's super convenient. You can empty the boiler and the pipe in a controlled manner without spilling too much. After I had disconnected the flue gas supply, the old central heating boiler could be removed. I always like to leave my signature for the next installer. And yes, we love technology. I was able to reuse the old bracket of the boiler, I checked whether it was suitable for water and then the new intergas could be mounted extremely. Here I use mounting adhesive to stick plywood sheets to the hollow wall. So I can mount my bracket securely. It's a bit of a habit of mine, but I always start with the return pipe. I always cut a 10 centimeter tube onto which I press a T-piece for the expansion tank. It is wise to place this as close as possible to the boiler. Then I press a 22.5 inch 22 T-piece for the fill and drain tap. Unfortunately, against my advice, the customer chose not to install a dirt separator. I have to accept that because not everyone has the budget for it. I used Flamco brackets because you can adjust them very nicely to the correct hardening distance. So you don't have to make crazy turns or jumps. I always place the loading combination as close as possible to the heat source. And the T-piece for the filling tap with non-return valve can be mounted underneath. The gas tap must also be mounted in a clearly visible position so that it can be quickly closed in the event of potassium loss. The hot water pipe can be installed without further accessories. I always install an overflow safety device on the supply as close as possible to the boiler. Now it's time for the expansion tank bracket. Today I used fish hollow wall plugs. And then the bracket could be put on. Just bend the connection and the expansion tank with half a bar pre-pressure can be attached. I left the glue sieve and placed a watering can into which the condensation drain and the loading combination can discharge. I mounted it under the overflow. If it leaks, it will leak into the watering can and you can also check it. Before I start with the flue gas discharge, I have filled the central heating chain so that I can test for leaks for as long as possible before I start test firing. After connecting the first part of the flue gas discharge, I was able to go onto the roof together with Abdul. We had a permanent scaffolding installed to safely transport the flue gas discharge. Always Abdul. <laughs> Please, boy. Back. Back. We had a special scaffolding built to reach the flue gas discharge. Otherwise, it would simply not be possible. Click, clack. So, I just left this one. This is perfect. It is firmly attached. Then it goes over it and then it clamps it down because of its weight. This is just perfect. This way it can't leak and it's done very well. Hop, this one can go on. Keiki sat. They're on the roof now.
loud casting with a fear of heights is not really useful. I can tell you. This is what I am bracing the flue gases for. Not that bag anymore. And it is better to have too many braces than one too few. So here's the gap. I also have a special key for that. But the car is so far away. Then just use the water fine pliers. The thermostat can now be connected. And then it is high time to adapt the boiler to the home. Press the flame until you see the key icon. Then press the key until you see the arrow and plus. And then you press the plus and the arrow at the same time. By entering code 15, you can change the parameters. At P10, I reduce the boiler's power to 40%. That's all I need for this house. This way, the boiler will run more smoothly for longer. At P31, I reduce the maximum speed of the pump to 50%. Please note, this setting depends on the situation. At P32, I reduce the minimum speed of the pump to 30%. At P33, I change the run-on time to 2 minutes so that the residual heat in the boiler is distributed further in the installation. At P59, I reduce the maximum supply temperature from 90 to 75 degrees. Please note, do not set it lower if you have a modulating thermostat. At P74, I turned off the comfort mode to run a little more energy efficiently. By pressing the arrow, you save everything and exit the children's menu. I am not finished yet. After the flue gas measurement and testing for gas leakage, the boiler can be delivered. Do you want to know how to set the boiler to flue gas settings? Then watch this video. There I will explain to you step by step how to do that. Did you like this video? Then give it a big thumbs up. And you are not yet a subscriber? Subscribe to my channel and you will stay informed. For now, thanks for watching and see you next time.